Welcome to a course on complex analysis. In this lecture, we are going to start our exact complex analysis. Yes, we are going to start our discussion on analytic functions, but before that, we need to recall the basics of some things that we have studied in real analysis, and we are going to extend that to complex analysis. Let us explore them. First of all, let us see what do we mean by a function. Yes, we have seen a function is a rule which is defined from one set to the other set where each element of the first set called as domain is mapped to some element, some unique element of the codomain, right? So this association we call it as a function. This is defined in general set theoretical notation. We have extended this idea to a functions of real variables that is if you consider your domain and codomain to be some subset of real numbers even if you don't care about the domain if your codomain is a set of real valued then we call that function as the real valued function here we are going to talk about functions of complex variables so functions of complex variables means what here you are going to take your domain as well as your codomain to be the complex variables okay that is the uh, set of complex numbers or the subset of complex numbers here if you see you cannot pictorically represent your function because a complex number consists of two things real and imaginary part whereas okay so your domain is going to take two different variables complex plane we say we do not have complex line we have only complex plane Similarly, the image is also going to be some complex number. In that case also what is happening? Image is also in some plane. So, you are taking an input in a plane and you are trying to find the output in another plane. So, you cannot uh, together represent a graph of a complex valued function. Okay, let us technically explore these functions of complex variables now. Technically, let us begin functions of a complex variable now. So, let us consider some S be a set of complex numbers. Here, if you closely look at the wordings that we are using, we are saying it is a set of complex numbers, which means it can be a subset of the all possible complex numbers, right? So whether you take the entire C or some subset of C, it doesn't matter. You will have to take some set in a set of complex numbers. A function F defined on S is a rule that assigns to each z in s a complex number w the number w is called the value of f at z and is denoted as f of z. Okay. In simpler things, we may write w is f of z. Okay. Here, the set s is called the domain of definition of the function f okay so these are it is same as that of the definition of a function that we have seen in the uh, real analysis okay what they have said here is that you will have to consider a complex number and this function f is defined from s to set of complex number c for every element in this s that element we represent as z for every element in 
yes we associate some element some complex number in c that shall be written as f of z okay so first example that we are about to consider is if f is defined on the set z not equal zero okay by W is one upon z. Okay, so what shall we write? We shall write W is some function of z that is nothing but one upon z. Here, this f is defined from the entire z restricted, like just remove c minus z zero to c. This is the definition of the function. We know z is a complex variable. Hence, z may be written as x plus i dot times of y okay so since w is also in c w may be written as u plus i dot times of v hence we shall write u plus i dot times of v is nothing but f of x plus i dot times of y so we may write this in this fashion so what actually have is what actually happening here is f of two variables that is f of z which is a function of two variable okay this shall be written as so each your u and v are functions of two variables if you wish to write them in polar coordinates then what is it going to happen your you know that your w is what u plus i dot times of v which is f of z, z takes the form this one. So your f of z is go, it shall also be written as u of r comma theta plus i times of v of r comma theta, which may be written like this as well. Okay, till now what we have done, we have, okay, this these are some general notations. Here, the function that we have is one upon z. So this may be written as x plus i times of y. So using the complex conjugate idea, we write this as, we multiply and divide by the conjugate of this z. So this gives us x minus i times of y upon x squared plus y squared. So your f of x plus i y becomes that is u plus i v which is x upon x squared plus y squared plus i dot times of minus y upon x squared plus y squared. If you notice here, your function u is x upon x squared plus y squared and the function v is minus y upon x squared plus y squared. If you try to convert this to a function in polar coordinates, your z takes the form r e to the power i dot times of theta. Hence, your f of z, that is f of r e to the power i dot times of theta becomes 1 upon r e to the power i dot times of theta. And if you bring the z to the i dot times of theta to the numerator, you would get 1 upon r times of e to the power minus i dot times of theta. So, this shall be written as cos theta minus i minus i dot times of sin theta. So, from this, what can you write? If you write them in polar coordinates, your u of r comma theta is 1 upon r cosine theta. And v of r comma theta is minus 1 upon r sin theta. Okay. Hope you have had the understanding of how to write the given function of a complex variable in these two forms. Right. If you, if you pay attention and see what are these u and v, you may very well notice that this function uh, u, v, r. So u of x, y is a real valued function 
and similarly your v of x y is also a real valued function so if you look at the definition of this u it is a function defined from r2 to, to r okay v is a function which is defined from r2 to, to r and if you look at your f okay uh, f of z which is defined from like some subset of uh, some subset of c to c the c is isomorphic to r2 so you may consider this function instead of writing z as if you write usually we write z as x plus i times of y if you write this as r of x comma y then you may treat your function is a mapping from some subset of uh, r2 to r2 okay how are we writing this one this is u plus i dot times of v this shall also be written as u of uh, r of u comma u comma v so this u gives you one real value and v gives you another real value together this gives you the r2 value right next we will see another example that is f of z is z squared so again we do the same substitution z is x plus i dot times of y hence your f of z becomes x plus i dot times of y squared so just by using the a plus b whole square formula that is using the binomial expansion we may write this as x squared plus 2 times of x i dot times of y plus i dot times of y whole squared so this is x squared plus 2i xy plus i ta squared is minus 1 we know that so this becomes minus y squared therefore if you just collect real and imaginary parts together it becomes x squared minus y squared plus i ta times of 2xy so from which we can identify our u function u is x squared minus y squared and the function v is 2xy right if we make use of the polar coordinates that is if z shall be written as r e to the power i to times of theta then f of z is f of r e to the power i to times of theta which is r e to the power i to times of theta whole squared so this becomes r squared and this becomes 2 i to times of theta right so this shall be written as r squared and uh, actually r squared e to the power i to times of 2 theta so this may be written as r squared multiplied with cos 2 theta plus i to times of sin 2 theta which tells you your function u which is the function of r and theta as r squared cos 2 theta and the function v is r squared sin 2 theta okay so next we work out uh, one more problem that is uh, f of z which is absolute of z squared right okay here we will have to pay a little more attention and understand what this function is okay we know that z is x plus i times of y and absolute of z is under root x squared plus y squared and if you just square it you are going to get x squared plus y squared which is always a non negative quantity and this is a real valued okay so here i have told you people that we are talking about the functions of complex variable and the resultant is also be a complex valued but still here the function we define gives us the real value is it possible yes of course it is possible because your r is a subset of c okay so the function that you are going to get is x squared plus y squared okay 
and if you see what is your function u and v you may very well notice that your u function is x squared plus y squared and the function v is 0 so your function may be written as x squared plus y squared plus aerotypes of 0 okay and uh, if you go for your uh, r square r multiplied with e to the power i times of theta your absolute of z becomes simply r therefore your absolute of z squared is r squared so if you write your function f of r e to the power i times of theta as u plus i times of v your function u in terms of r and theta is simply r squared and the function v is 0 okay so these are some standard examples that we have seen next uh, i am going to make some remarks okay we are not going to prove them just i am going to state these things uh, if you have a polynomial in z which is written as a naught plus a1 times of z plus a2 z squared etc till a n z to the power n okay this is a polynomial of degree n. Here the domain of this function is entire C. Okay. Now we will have to pay attention to I C the domain of definition of the functions that we have seen till now okay here they themselves have specified that it is defined on the set where is it not equal zero which means here the domain is c minus set zero whereas if you look at the domain in the function f of z is z squared here your z can be any value on c okay there is no restriction upon it and similarly here also your z can be any value on c there is no restriction right so here the polynomial function is defined on entire c next quotients quotients are rational functions they are where p and q are some polynomials of respective degrees this is called as rational functions which is also defined on every point z provided your q of z is not zero suppose at some points there may be any number of points that is based on the degree of uh, q okay suppose function q is of order m then q has at most m roots and hence these m roots may be removed from entire C to get the domain of P of Z upon Q of Z. Right? So, if you wish to make some generalizations of these things, then we will go to the concept of multiple valued functions. Like, uh, for example, let me give you, but not in this lecture. In the upcoming lecture, I am going to talk about the multiple valued functions in complex variables and, and then we will make some more discussions on the functions of complex variables. Thank you.